Yes, okay, my name is uh, Petr Chulakov. Uh, I'm an associate professor of political sociology at the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences here in Sofia in Bulgaria. Uh, I've been a, a graduate scholar in the past in the London School of Economics and Political Science in London. Uh, I've done an internship at the BBC, Westminster Political Research Unit in London, worked at the European Commission for a while, and I had approximately 20 years of experience, more or less, as a political consultant. Uh, one thing that I would like to clarify from the very beginning uh, is that I'm not affiliated with any political party. I think this is important to be clear from the very beginning, so I don't have any uh, institutional bias, I think, whatsoever. So I'm, I'm the one to blame for any faults in the interpretation. Uh, I think the, the reason why I, I wrote on this particular topic is because obviously I, I find this topic to be interesting and challenging. There was not to be honest, very much written on that topic in Bulgaria. At least in the scientific uh, literature, there was not really a lot of um, scholarly work done on this particular, in this particular field. I also think that this is an issue which is quite important. Uh, it's a, a current issue which, is, which has a huge impact on Bulgarian politics and the way uh, Bulgarian society operates, the way the political system operates. So this is what really uh, motivated me to, to write the book, yes. So Bulgaria, as you, as you correctly said, is a post-communist country. Uh, it has a population of roughly 7 million people, according to the population census from 2011. We have a lot of immigration, unfortunately, so the population is actually decreasing. Uh, we are not having a lot of issues with immigration like other countries in the European Union, like Italy, for example. But nonetheless, the populist uh, radical right and radical left parties are quite strong. They're gaining momentum uh, here in Bulgaria. Bulgaria is a multi-ethnic uh, country. Uh, we have, uh, apart from ethnic Bulgarians, which are the, constitute the majority of the population, we have uh, approximately 9% of the population which describe or identify themselves as Turks. We have uh, around 5% according to this population census from 2011, which I just quoted, around 5% who describe themselves as Roma or, uh, yeah, the Roma population. I think it is fair to say that it is probably higher than this because many of the Roma prefer to identify themselves as Serbs because there is a lot of stigma uh, on the Roma or as the, the, the public often calls them the gypsies. Uh, there, are a lot, there is a lot of prejudice against the, the Roma, and this is probably one of the, the main issues which is, the, I would say, used by the ethnic entrepreneurs in the country. That is, that they talk about Roma crimes, the fact that majority of Roma uh, are unemployed, they remain in the ghettos, and so on and so forth. And uh, consequently, the ethnic entrepreneurs, as I describe them in the book, try to mobilize uh, support in order to uh, tear apart, to, to tear down this uh, ethnic modeling which exists in the country. So yeah, this is, generally speaking, this is the subject of the book. It's, it's a scientific monograph, I should explain. Uh, this is not like a, a novel of some kind. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not the product of fiction. It's a scientific uh, uh, monograph that, which has been, of course, um, uh, which it has been uh, peer reviewed. Uh, and it is published by Ibidan Ferlach in Stuttgart, Germany, and distributed by Columbia University Press uh, in North and South America. The main ethnic party in Bulgaria, the MRF, is primarily uh, self-identified as a Turkish party, party, with, party which defends the political party, which defends the interests of the Turkish minority in Bulgaria, which, like I said, is larger than the Roma minority. It's approximately 9% of the population. But many Roma as well vote for the MRF. Now, one of the problems, in my view, uh, in the political system is that, uh, unfortunately, Roma seem to not be very well represented in political institutions. Uh, there, there have been attempts to make Roma political parties, but they have been, uh, as a whole, they have been very unsuccessful. So I would say that the monopoly over the ethnic vote is held by the MRF, which is a political party, uh, which is a very, uh, I would say, sui generis political party, very specific political party. 
it has been described as a corporation, for example. There has been uh, allegations that uh, this party has connections to organized crime. Uh, and when one of the MEPs and one of the key figures in this uh, political party, Mr. Delampevsky, was uh, elected uh, the head of National Security Agency in the summer 2013, there were a lot of protests in Sofia, in Bulgaria, against this decision of the parliamentary majority at the time and again against the decision of the government because this whole thing happened as a result of a pressure from the government. Then the government was uh, led by Mr. Sergei Stanishik, who is now uh, chair of the uh, Socialist uh, Party. Uh, of course, uh, uh, as you know, the, the party family, uh, uh, Party of European Socialists, of course, uh, so MRF is uh, the place of MRF movement of rights and freedoms, just to spell this abbreviation for our viewers, or it is also DPC in uh, Bulgarian. Uh, this sometimes it is uh, spelled DPC in English as well. This, this is why I am saying it both ways. So this political party has a very, I would say, very specific place in uh, in the political system, and uh, it the decision making procedures in the party are very. I would say uh, opaque. Uh, the party hierarchy is very strict. So, uh, in my analysis, I analyze this in the book as well. I analyze uh, the support for this political party, electoral support. I analyze the decision-making procedures, and I demonstrate that essentially the leader of, of this political party is is uh, a figure who uh, concentrates in his hands a lot of political power. And so we cannot really speak about internal party democracy, especially in the case with the MRF. But I, I would uh, make the point that other political parties in Bulgaria, they also suffer from this. I, I wouldn't say that uh, politicians in general have a lot of grassroots uh, support from the grassroots. I think it's more the other way around. So we have uh, an oligarchic type elite which uh, tries to present uh, itself as a defender of the rights of the rights of the people. And just to put this into perspective, I'm talking about uh, political institutions because the title of the book, just to remind our viewers, is Ethnic Entrepreneurs Unmasked, and then the subtitle is Political Institutions and Ethnic Offense in Bulgaria. And what I'm trying to clarify in the first part of the book is the time uh, analyzing ethnic relations and ethnic conflicts from the perspective of the institutions. I'm saying, uh, I'm trying to make the point why it is so dangerous to politicize the ethnic identity. And I'm comparing the case of Bulgaria with the case of the uh, Yugoslav Federation, the demise of the Yugoslav Federation. And I'm showing that uh, politicizing ethnic identi identity is very dangerous in itself. But whenever you have weak institutions, political institutions, but uh, you have institutions which are affected by corruption, which are affected by nepotism, uh, then the situation can easily uh, get out of hand. And unfortunately, Bulgaria remains, according to Transparency International, the recent data, which are for 2018, uh, they demonstrate that Bulgaria unfortunately has the highest level of corruption. In the public in the public sector, we have uh, a very uh, limited media freedom. Uh, I'm afraid. Uh, so, in the Reporters Without Borders report, we are ranked uh, 113th, which is not a very enviable place, I would say. Uh, so, in this situation, when we have ethnic entrepreneurs who are very active in the country, I would say this creates a lot of security. Uh, risks for the country, for the stability of the country. And just to, to end on this note, uh, we have three um, populist radical right parties which are in, represented in the government, the so-called United Patriots, which uh, combine, their, this is a combination, a political coalition of three political parties, uh, ATAKA, uh, National Front for the Salvation of, of uh, Bulgaria, and IMRO, or VEMERO in Bulgaria. And they are the coalition party of the, the largest party in the cabinet, which is uh, GERP, uh, which is a member of the EPP, the European People's Party. 
So it's a, it's a rather complex picture. I know, I know for somebody who is not very well familiar, familiar with Bulgaria, this can sound quite esoteric. I realize it's a lot of information. Uh, but I'd like to say that um, the book is based on a lot of uh, empirical research. I examine as well uh, case studies. I examine court cases which reveal that, uh, for example, there is ethnic profiling which is used by the police, for example. In many cases, the rights of Roma have been violated. Uh, and ex I examine as well the decisions of the court decisions of the European Court of Justice, which uh, reveal this. Uh, and I think there is uh, a plethora of empirical evidence that suggests that uh, ethnic entrepreneurs in Bulgaria definitely they they uh, uh, pose a significant problem for the political system and democracy. I would say uh, in general. Okay, so this is this is uh, this is scientific lingo. Uh, ethnic entrepreneur is something which is used as a term in the scientific literature. So I'm going to clarify uh, clarify for our viewers by ethnic entrepreneur. What I mean is a, a politician typically uh, who claims to defend uh, the interests of a certain ethnic minority or minorities and to gain uh, and to mobilize political support in order to defend a certain cause or causes. Uh, unfortunately, what happens very often is that this uh, politician or this political party uh, or an ethnic party, as, as I say, uh, very often does not really represent the interests of uh, its constituents. And what happens is that uh, such political parties essentially operate as, as large companies uh, with a very strong uh, oligarchical elite which is basically uh, ruling or leading this political party. So like I said, a very, very small, very limited internal party democracy. So on the one hand, we have the ethnic parties like the MRF or the so-called Turkish party or one of the, the main party in Bulgaria, which at least claims to defend, claims to defend the rights of uh, the Turks, the Roma, the Pomaks as well. But on the other hand, we have the populist radical right and radical left parties which can also be described as ethnic entrepreneurs because they're playing uh, a very dangerous game. They're, they're using the ethnic, inter-ethnic strife and the ethnic tensions in the country between Bulgarians and Roma, for example, and between Bulgarians and Turks. And they try to present themselves as authentic defenders of what is to be a Bulgarian, what is uh, a Bulgarian nationalism, Bulgarian patriotism. Uh, and uh, approximately their support in the political system is uh, roughly around 15%, which is quite a significant chunk, I would say, in, in, in the political system. Now, the, the political support for the three political parties that are in the government, the United Patriots, is uh, diminishing, it is declining. And it is quite interesting to say that one of the reasons for this, or perhaps the main reason why, why this is so, why this support is, um, is diminishing is uh, because some of the, the politicians, some of the leading politicians in this coalition have been uh, connected to corruption, to corruption scandals. For example, the deputy uh, prime minister, uh, Mr. Krasimir uh, Karakacharo, he has been connected to a, a scandal with um, one of the national agencies, uh, which is the, the, the agency which gives essentially uh, Bulgarian citizenship, of all things. Uh, and this particular scandal uh, has, uh, to, I would say, to a large extent, ruined the, the image of uh, Mr. Karakachanov. And Mr. Karakachanov now tries to respond uh, with a campaign which uh, is a campaign essentially targeting the Roma population. Uh, and he tries to present a concept uh, for uh, integration of Roma, which has been, can be, has been described by many uh, human uh, rights organizations in Bulgaria as uh, a concept which uh, violates the penal code and promotes hate speech, for example, because one of the things that, that is mentioned in this concept is that uh, the government should control the birth rate, uh, which is not a very democratic measure, I would say, especially in the country that is a member of the European Union. So this is just an example to illustrate the, the type of rhetoric that is used in, in Bulgarian politics, unfortunately. One, one of the things which are, I, I wouldn't say surprising, but which, which would be surprising for the general public at least, is the fact that Bulgaria, for example, has been described as a very tolerant society. Uh, and uh, 
there is this uh, so-called cliche of the multiculturalism, and it, it's supposed that Bulgaria is a representative of this cliche, that it promotes a peaceful coexistence between Roma, Turks, Jews, Bulgarians, and so on and so forth. The reality, uh, I'm afraid, is quite different. What the empirical data suggests is that, in fact, Bulgarians become less and less to tolerant. I'm talking about, of course, the ethnic majority. Uh, and essentially, the social distances which are, which are used in sociology to examine the level of toleration of a certain society, the social distances are increasing. So, for example, um, in 2016, only about 23% of ethnic Bulgarians, or the people who identify themselves as ethnic Bulgarians, are prepared to have a Roma as their neighbor, uh, which is uh, even a, a reduction if we, if we compare this, so that the, the social distances are increasing in comparison to eight years earlier than that, 2008, where again the social distances between ethnic Bulgarians and Roma were quite significant, but you know the gap was somewhat smaller. So I'll say that this is one of the I'll say interesting facts which is examined in the book. But I, I'm I'm not content of simply uh, stating the facts. I'm interested in what, why they matter in the political system. How, for example, the the fact that the social distances are increasing. How it is used by the so-called ethnic entrepreneurs for political mobilization. And I'm using this data in order to make a forecast about the future. What I'm saying is that the uh, amount of, uh, let's put it that way, nationalist vote or vote for populist radical right or radical left formation is going to increase in the future. I expect this. Even though at the moment the support for the three political parties in the government, the populist radical right parties, uh, is diminishing, uh, at the same time we have uh, almost a fixed chunk, a uh, fixed percentage of the vote, which is around 15% uh, of the voters who are prepared to support such such issues. So what I'm saying is that even if uh, politicians like Mr. Karakachanov, if he loses, you know, he, his reputation is totally ruined, there are going to be other others who are very much uh, willing and they will be able to replace him instantly. Uh, and this is one of the dangers uh, that I see for Bulgaria. Another danger that I see is that Bulgaria remains, unfortunately, the poorest country in the European Union. So the minimum uh, monthly wage is approximately 280 euro, 280 euro per month, which is quite low, I would say, if you compare it to other countries. See, there are other countries in, in the region, on, in the Balkans, for example. And uh, this is one of, one of the reasons why uh, populists, people, uh, politicians that uh, try to claim that they're going to um, solve all problems, including um, ghettos, including uh, segregation, including pro problems, to put it that way, with Roma and Roma crimes. Such politicians are gaining uh, very quickly a lot of momentum. They're getting a lot of support. So this is one, one uh, issue that is, uh, I would say, quite worrying for Bulgaria. Unfortunately, like, like, like I said, the, the, the general tendency is that Bulgarian society, the ethnic Bulgarians, are becoming less and less tolerant, especially towards Roma. Now, uh, to be uh, as objective as I can, there is statistical evidence which suggests that the crime rate uh, among Roma is, in, in general, higher than among uh, the perpetrators, let's say, of Turkish origin or of ethnic Bulgarian origin. However, this type of crimes or so-called Roma crimes are used by ethnic entrepreneurs in order to promote general intolerance uh, towards the whole ethnic group. And this is, uh, I would say, quite, quite dangerous. Now, as far as whether there are organizations that the Roma can use in order to, you know, to present uh, their cases and to defend their rights, there are such organizations, but uh, you know, the, the lingo that is used by the populist radical right parties, and not only by them, is that these institutions, these organizations, they're uh, very often described as foreign servants. So, for example, the Bulgarian Helsinki uh, Committee is seen as an organization which promotes the ideals of American imperialism, of all things. This is the type of uh, lingo that is used. And uh, the, the court system, and I, and I describe this in the, in the third part of the book, 
where I'm talking about the judiciary and the way uh, we have a lot of problems with the judiciary as well, as you can imagine in a country which is described as the country with the highest corruption level of corruption in the public sector in the European Union. It, it is quite clear that the judiciary is not going to operate very smoothly, to say the least. So uh, there, the, the, the Roma uh, offer very often receive the, the short end of the stick, you know, they're, they're the ones who are blamed for everything. Um, there is often cases, there are often cases of, of police, police brutality against the Roma. They have been very well documented. I examine such cases. Uh, unfortunately, as far as the level in Bulgaria, the, 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 the national uh, system, the, the national uh, core system is concerned, it doesn't do very much to, to defend the rights of uh, the, this particular population. So like I said, yes, there, there, there is a problem as far as crime levels, uh, uh, as far as crimes that are committed by Roma uh, is concerned. Yes, there is such a problem and there is statistic which says that uh, in general, uh, Roma are committing more crimes than, let's say, uh, Turks or ethnic Bulgarians. But one thing to remember is that the level of this criminal activities, if you want to call them that way, it is decreasing, which is quite important. It is not what used to be. So the situation is getting more and more in control. Although that we can entrepreneurs are saying that it is the complete opposite, and this is not true. And another thing to remember is that I think entrepreneurs like Mr. Terakachov, like, who I gave as an example, they try to put, put a stigma on the whole group. And uh, at the beginning of this year, in 2019, he uh, very famously said, uh, the Deputy uh, Prime Minister Karakachanov said that uh, all Roma are insolent and they commit crimes. And like I said, they pr this promotes uh, a lot of criticism by uh, human rights lawyers and activists. Yeah, uh, j just to just to restate that these uh, these are my own personal views, uh, and they by no means reflect the views of my employers at the moment. Uh, now, I would say that uh, as far as European institutions are concerned, there is a lot of politics involved. So, for example, in May of this year, 2019, we have European elections that are coming, right? And uh, the parties that are in the government. Uh, they are seen as coalition partners of the European People's Party, for example. So even th though in Bulgaria we have problems with corruption, uh, the uh, politicians from the European, European People's Party, they praise uh, Prime Minister Borisov for his achievements. So I'm not really sure that uh, whatever advice uh, I could give to them, uh, they'll be prepared to do anything more serious in order to, uh, I would say, um, make situation in Bulgaria a little bit better. There, there have been very critical reports on behalf of the European Commission regarding the judiciary in Bulgaria, for example. And there, there have been a lot of discussion uh, that these reports promoted in Bulgaria. Uh, but I would say that um, there is a lot of talk and unfortunately a few things are, are done in order to, to address this issue. So this is, this is quite a significant problem. I don't think that Brussels uh, can really solve our problems. I, I'm afraid it, we have to deal with it uh, ourselves. The, the general message which, which I like to, uh, to, to deliver to, to come through uh, in, including this interview is that this is not these are not issues that are specific to Bulgaria. I know that they can sound very esoteric, but the populist radical right political parties are on the rise everywhere in the world. Like, for example, the former Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, stated in uh, her last book, Fascism a Warning, her book from 2018. This is, this is really a global tendency. So if one um, analyzes or takes a look at the Bulgarian case, he or she very well may see the, the tendencies or specific, I would say, not specific, but tendencies that may apply very well for other parts of the world, for sure for other parts of Europe as well. Uh, some of the Bulgarian politicians, for example, they have been, um, they're, they're, they're self-professed open admirers of politicians like the Hungarian uh, Prime Minister Viktor Orban, for example. One of the members of the United Patriots one of the leaders of the United Patriots, uh, Mr. Volen Sidorov, the leader of political party Ataka, or Atak in English, uh, he is a very big fan of uh, the Russian president Vladimir Putin. Uh, for example, he is very much in support of uh, Russia's policy towards Ukraine. Uh, he is very much in support of annexation of uh, Crimea. Uh, so 
these are not issues and Bulgaria is a member of the European Union. So it, it is very important to see this as an example of the processes that are ongoing in the European Union as a whole. In Italy, we have some, someone like Matteo Salvini. In France, we have uh, Rassemblement uh, National, we have uh, Marine Le Pen. Um, so this type of, of rhetoric uh, is really used by a lot of politicians. So this is why I'm using the term populist radical right parties, which is a well-known term in the scientific literature and has uh, been coined by uh, Kass Mude, a very, known, uh, very well known political uh, scientist. It was, it was really nice talking to you. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time.